Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, ITCSE Mathematics. This is term two, and this is section one of week one. We're going to work through exercises 5.1 and 5.2. That's also section 5.1 and 5.2 in the maths textbook. Uh, we're going to keep these two sections as one, and we're going to start with multiplication of fractions. Fraction multiplication is one of the easiest operations to do in maths. If you have fractions which you need to multiply, then you are sitting in the pound seats because that's very easy. So, for instance, if we got two thirds and we want to multiply it by one fifth, then we multiply 2 times 1 is equal to 2 on top and the bottom multiplied with the bottom gives us 15 and there's your answer. That's very easy. If your numbers are bigger and you're 7 over 11 and you're multiplying it with 22 over 21 for example, not many people know their 21 and 22 times table, so we can simplify this by cancellation. We look for common factors. There's common factors here, common factors here, and 11 and 22 has common factors. So, we divide 11 into itself, we get 1. 22 divided by 11 gives 2. 7 divided by 7 gives 1. 21 divided by 7 gives 3. And your answer is 2 thirds. Much easier than having to multiply 7 by 22 and 11 by 21. All this can be done on your calculator. So why do you need to bother to do it in your head? The reason is somebody has to design the calculators. And that is why you need to do maths. Doing maths is very important. If you don't know maths, you won't know physics. If you don't know physics, you won't know chemistry. If you don't know chemistry, you won't know biochemistry. If you don't know biochemistry, you won't know life science. If you don't know life science, you will get eaten by a lion, a metaphorical lion. So, now, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to form equivalent fractions. How do we form equivalent fractions? Well, one way is by multiplication. We can take, for instance, a quarter, and we can multiply this by any number, as long as the top and the bottom is the same, we will get an equivalent fraction. Five times one is five, 5 times 4 is 20. This is a quarter. We can even multiply this again by something. Let's do 5 again. 5 times 5 is 25. And 5 times 20 is 100. It is still a quarter. I haven't really changed anything. All I've done is, instead of cutting the pizza into 4 pieces and eating 1 piece, I've cut the pizza up into 100 pieces and eaten 25 of the pieces, but I haven't actually changed anything. So we can form equivalent fractions by multiplication. We can also form equivalent fractions by division. Uh, let us say we've got a fraction of 100 over 200, or a fraction of 70 over 140, or a fraction of 1000 over 2,000. Are these equivalent fractions? Well, we need to, again to divide by the highest common factor. And if you can't see the highest common factor, we, we will excuse you by using not the highest common factor, but it just means you will have to divide again until you can't divide anymore. But we can, these are very easy to see. 100 over 200 is a half. 70 over 40, 70 goes into there one, 70 goes into 140 twice. 1,000 goes into 1,000 one, 1,000 goes into 2,000 twice. These are all equivalent fractions, they are a half. And that is the way that we can use to compare fractions as well. We, when we cannot divide out uh, common factors anymore. We know this fraction is in its lowest form. Let us suppose we have a fraction such as um, 2 over 4 
Well, another fraction such as 11 over 22, and another fraction such as 7 over, 20, over 70, and a fraction such as, let's say, 1 over 3. Which of these are equivalent fractions? Okay, we're dividing by the common factor here. Yeah, this, we can see, is 1 over 4. Dividing by the common factor here, yeah, which is 11, gives us 1 over 2. And dividing by the common factor here, yeah, which is 7, gives us 1 over 10. And this we cannot divide anymore, so it's just 1 over 3. So we can see that there are... Okay, sorry, there's a mistake here. I've got to divide by 2 here. I've got to divide by 2. 2 goes into 2, 1. 2 goes into 4, 2. And therefore, this fraction and this fraction, both are half, so they are equivalent fractions. These are not equivalent fractions. Okay, so this is how you can determine which fractions are equivalent. So you can use this to compare fractions by writing a fraction in its lowest terms. It's also important when you're doing a uh, exercise or a question where the answer is a fraction, you must always give that answer in its lowest terms. Uh, there's one extra thing I must just show you here as well. Um, mixed numbers, this, this, you're supposed to know this, or you should have known it, but uh, I just want to show you. Uh, you very often get fractions in the form of mixed numbers. That's a mixed number. That's three and one fifth. Three and one fifth. How do you write this as a fraction? Well, you say, let's, let's write this a bit like in the middle here. Because this is actually three over one. Okay. No, sorry, it's not that. Three and one fifth. This is how many fifths are in three? Fifteen fifths are in three. Each one has five fifths. And we still got one fifth. That gives us 16 fifths. That is how you change a mixed number to an improper fraction, or top of the fraction. Short and wise, you multiply these two and add that one. So if you want to remember the short end, it's 5 threes of 15 plus 1, 16 over 5. Okay, so you must make sure that you can change from mixed numbers to improper fractions and from improper fractions to mixed numbers. Uh, that will be all for the time being. I if you have any problems with this, please contact.